Rafael Nadal, 22 slams, the strongest player ever on clay, uses this grip for volleys and slice backhand. It is a grip very close to an Easter forehand and with the hand positioned several centimeters from the bottom of the handle. Nadal is not a legend despite this grip, because he is constantly one of the best players in terms of points won at the net, with a percentage of around 72%, therefore higher than the circuit average of around 65. If you have ever taken a tennis lesson, you will have heard the recommendations several times to hold the grip continental for volleys and at the bottom of the handle. Nadal's is a grip that most coaches in the world consider to be Wrong, and yet, with it, he is among the world's highest performing players in that fundamental. What can this tell us? That that grip is functional to his game, and that at the moment there is no single technique that the performance model defines as optimal, but there are several that lead to excellent results. Technique is a set of motor actions that we implement to achieve our tactical goals. Therefore, all our movements to hit the ball and to win points. The technique defines the performance, but training technique doesn't mean that there is a master who imparts a technique according to a personal model, but that there is a coach who provides training parameters to the player and continually offer him tactical situations that challenge. As long as there is a coach who throws simple and predictable balls in basket drills, demanding something technical from the player, the training will be poor, because we are not training the player to solve tactical problems with his technique, but we are taking away all the tactical difficulties and ball intensities to train the shot in such optimal situations that will never be there in a match. The capable coach is the one who continuously stimulates difficult and challenging tactical situations for the player, training his ability to organize the technique in relation to an always different stimulus. In that case, we are really training the technique, and the training will be truly effective and efficient. Another interesting element that Nadal's grip highlights is that in volleys or in slice backhand, the tactical aim is hardly speed, but control of the direction of the shot and of the height of the ball, especially in modern tennis, where volleys in most cases are the finalization of a point that has already been largely constructed and it is often enough to direct and keep the ball low. This is also true in doubles. Directions and low balls are the main elements to define a volley as good and especially in doubles, the speed of the game and the unpredictability of the situations highlights even more more that the best players are the ones trained to use their technique in fast, difficult and unpredictable situations. Another interesting element is that the grips are not fixed, but our central nervous system organizes them to respond to tactical tasks. We have technical memories that we recall and reshape based on the situation we examine through our senses. In difficult situations, our central nervous system is ready to take unusual grips like this one, this one, or this one. And Nadal has also modified his grip over the years, from a more classical one in the early years up to the one today. How to train volleys? Definitely not like this, or this. Or this. Here we go. Come on. Come on. Come on. Down, 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 down. Come on. Sprinter's position. Come on. Like Rafa. Head down. Come on. Get your head down like Rafa. And not even with the most used exercise, the classic rally where a player is at the net and the other at the baseline. Little intensity of the incoming balls, no difficulty in tracking and searching, little shifts, little unpredictability, and the tactical aim of winning the point is absent. Scientific evidence highlights the importance of providing volume and intensity to the player and respecting the principle of specificity. So, training must focus on point situations. 
positions, on doubles, on serve and volley perhaps from facilitated positions, on reductions or variations in spaces and position of the players, and on a great variety of volleys. The use of slower balls, when the level of the players is still lacking, can ensure a good specific volume, reducing errors, integrating related activities where you play a lot of volleys and smashes, such as paddle or beach tennis, can also be very interesting. Subscribe to the channel and we'll talk about it again. See you next time.